Vou compartilhar de novo aqui, ó, de apresentação, slides, PowerPoint. Então, tá tudo certo aqui. Sharing. Vai estar tá compartilhado lá, né? Então, vai ser show. So, primeira parte do programa, temos que uma charla e quisera apresentar o eh, eh, Dr. Javiano Schwartz. Y esta parte es en inglés, yo puedo indicar sus eh, eh, informaciones sobre el eh, doctor profesor, profesor eh, Schwartz. Eh, he is currently professor and director of the master program Ed Legislative Power in Chamber of Deputies, Brasilia, eh, Brazil. He graduated eh, in eh, computer science from Universidad Católica de Brasilia and later on from electrical engineering, also from Universidad de Brasilia. And later he received his doctorate degree in electronic system engineering and automation, also from University of Brasilia. He published a number of uh, work related to biomedical engineering. And lately uh, he was also working as a health researcher uh, until 2021 in IAFF Institute in Rio de Janeiro. So uh, um, now we are going to the, here's his presentation and later on we join him yes, in uh, Cafe Brazil. The title of his presentation is Metaverse Perspective in uh, Healthcare. Uh, welcome Dr. Uh, Fabiano Schwartz. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you for the introduction. Can you hear me well? Yes. Yes, I can, and I hope everybody else too. Yeah. Yes. So, buenos dias a todos. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for this opportunity to be here as a keynote speaker today. It's a great honor and a distinct privilege for me to be here today. Even in virtual mode, it's an unprecedented opportunity for me. So my greetings to audience. Thank you all for coming and my special greetings to the hosts of the event, Dr. Fernando Merchan, president of GMEPE PACE 2022 conference, Ingeniero Hector Montemayor, rector of Universidad Tecnológica de Panamá, and Dr. Christopher Drusgowski, honorary founder and coordinator of this conference. On whose behalf, I would like to thank the entire team. Actually, I would like to be with you in Panama in person, but professional commitments prevented me from traveling during this period. I had the opportunity to be in Panama City in 2013, and I I really enjoyed this experience. You have a wonderful city, a wonderful country, and I can say that it's a perfect place to visit, enjoy, and exchange experience. And of course, it's the best place in the world to try out ceviche, sancocho, and other Panamanian delights. So, well, let me share my, my screen in order to start my presentation. Let me see here. I hope you can see my screen now, yeah? Yes, we can see it well, but thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, for this presentation, I prepared a topic that has been explored a lot lately. And my proposal is to discuss some possible new procedures in healthcare, given what has been promised about the metaverse environment. And as you must know, the idea of the metaverse, metaverse has incredible potential because it provides an entirely new approach to interaction and human connection. And since I decided to accept this invitation for this talk, 
I've been following the news about Metaverse every day. And I can assure you that every day we, we have something new about Metaverse. It can be a new crypto coin, a new piece of land for sale, or a mega virtual yacht that just sold for six, $650,000. Wow, that's still very difficult to understand this new world in this way of making investments and make business. But as everything in life, I believe this environment can be used for good things or bad things. And our interest here is to discuss possible impacts or new possibilities in healthcare. So in this context, yes, in this context, the natural question is, what can we expect from metaverse in the healthcare field? As this is a kind of new world, a level of reality beyond our own. I intend to show an analogy of the metaverse with the so-called holographic principle, which seems to explain some hard to explain phenomena. So my proposition here today is to bring a different ref reflection, or at least a not usual one, maybe a philosophical one. It's a little different considering that we are in a conference of biomedical engineering. But first, let me start with the, with we can call the art of the possible and try to highlight some potential clinical user case. So I believe most of you have already heard about the promising resources in augmented and virtual reality in their applications in healthcare. But even then, I'd like to show you some of these resources to stimulate the reflection and to give you as a train of thought. So my intention is not to make advertisements for one or another company. I'm not getting any profit here. But there is no way to talk about metaverse without mention some products or ideas of Microsoft, Meta, Brain Lab, Accenture, Philips and others. So the following slides and, and videos just illustrate the art of the possible and show use cases involving mixed reality platforms. And here I will use the term mixed reality as a synonym of augmented reality, even though there is a slight difference between them, conceptually speaking, but that doesn't detract from our understanding here. Okay. So thinking in terms of augmented or mixed reality, the possibilities range from improving surgical procedures to enriching healthcare teaching and learning experience. For example, a surgeon can easily have access to the patient data in an operating room, what can be helpful for taking the better decision. Mixed reality makes possible to combine the information of MRI, CT, and other medical scans in a 3D model which can be precisely overlaid to the patient body. And these features give the patients a deeper understanding of their illness, of the expected results, the surgical procedures, and the treatment methods. And they also give the physicians the right conditions to accurately planning, discuss, and execute each step of a surgery with reliability, with precision, and so as to ensure the patient's safety and, and the success of the procedure. And mixed reality also has application in healthcare delivery systems, enabling 
all citizens to receive healthcare services whenever and wherever needed. And certainly, a significant gain is related to healthcare education. This interactive way students observe all the anatomical structures in a new way of teaching and of learning anatomy, which gives the students a better understanding of the relationship among the body systems. So, for example, we can walk around a hologram and look at how the heart beats in healthy and unhealthy conditions, or how the brain processes information, how to deal with a bone fracture case, and how to interact, even if we are physically separated. And just to illustrate, this video shows two scenes where mixed reality was used in the context of metaverse. This one, where people in different places are interact around a brain hologram, possibly during a class or a school presentation. In the second one, the second scene shows a medical team geographically distant, sharing the same in virtual environment to discuss surgical procedures. Both scenes are examples of augmented reality inside metaverse, inside the context of metaverse. I know it looks like science fiction, but as I said before, many of these things are just possibilities are just projects in development. But if you look at just 20 years ago, no one ever imagined that we could carry a phone or watch on our body that could count calories or detect heart rhythms. We watched yesterday the presentation of a smartphone application for respiratory rate estimation, monitoring Breathing, breathing disorders. And likewise, if this VR and mixed reality connectivity devices truly become an, an integral part of our everyday experience, they will certainly have a big potential to become a day-to-day -to -day tool in the healthcare field. I personally believe this will happen because there are giant companies investing in these technologies. So let's now watch some of the virtual reality or just VR resource. The key word here is immersion because VR allows patients to be immersed in incredible new worlds which are built with dazzling attention to details. For example, in some mental health issues like Alzheimer, the VR therapy immerses the patients in a calm and peaceful world. Let me show you another video and I will narrate the scenes. So this experience simulates their sense and allows for them to interact with the virtual world, which gives a person living with a cognitive disability an enormous amount of possibilities, like feel good about themselves. In other words, VR can bring out emotions that sometimes can't come out in other ways. And this is where VR shines, because it is an evocative technology which makes possible to put people in simulations of everyday situations and face their fears and learn, learn ways to deal with that emotions in an appropriate fashion. This is one example. VR is used to distract and calm patients who find MRI scans challenging. Back into the operating room, neurosurgeons use VR to virtually enter the patient's skull, for example and move through brain tissues, neurons, and blood vessels in order to practice before the surgery. 
this practice is what makes surgery surgery shorter and safer. Now imagine a virtual world where we can grasp an object and feel the sensation of that object pressing into our skin. This is the goal of Meta's sci-fi haptic glove prototype. Oh, sorry. I just advanced the, the film, but let me put in the correct place here. Okay. So this kind of gloves can provide us with it an even more realistic experience and ways of interaction in an environment like Metaverse. And yes, imagine another situation where we can walk around in every direction without leaving the place, like in this platform. This also provides us with more ways of interaction. And all these resources can make us feel as if we were inside a real world. And that's the main point of my approach here, because I don't know if you've ever had a, a VR experience. I have, and it's something absolutely real. The first time I used a VR headset, my instinct was to walk freely within that virtual environment. So I was about to crash into a wall and a friend of mine said, hey, stop, watch out for the wall in front of you. And why this kind of situation, of situation happens? It happens because the combination of all sorts of senses that we can experience in a VR environment can make our brain believes that everything we see, ear and touch is an expression of what's real. So in my opinion, this is the main potential of the metaverse. Because this environment, in addition, makes possible to to interact with other people, to meet other people by holoportation or as an avatar, as if we were in the same place. This event could be held inside Metaverse, maybe in the future. Who knows? So, to continue in this reasoning, I ask for your permission to consider a not usual definition of reality, which is based on a principle called holographic principle. According to some physicists, the universe itself is a kind of giant hologram. And according to some neuroscientists, our brain processes information employing some kind of internal hologram. So these ideas and others that I will show here are discussed in the book, The Holographic Universe, written by Michael Talbot, which compiles the research of Carl Priban, a neurophysiologist, and David Bohm, a physicist. So first of all, let me quickly review what a hologram is in order to our understanding of this reason. In simplified way, a hologram is the result of interference between light waves recorded on a film. So interference is the crisscrossing pattern that occurs when two or more waves such as waves of water ripple through each other. Notice in this video the areas of motion and calm in the water. They form an interference pattern. It's a kind of interference pattern. And to produce a hologram, 
in a conventional way, a single laser is split into two separate beams. The first beam is bounced off the object to be photographed. And, and then a second beam or reference beam is allowed to collide with the reflected light of the first. And when this happens, they create an interference pattern, which is then recorded on a piece of film. And now when the reference beam alone shines through the film, each pattern reconstructs its own object beam and thus the whole object appears to be reconstructed. In this next video is an example of the entire process of a hologram construction. We can see the beam split into two, then the object beam and reference beam produce an interference pattern recorded on a piece of film. And finally, the object is reconstructed. And a curiosity about the hologram is that in addition to creating three-dimensional images, every piece of film contains all the information recorded in the whole film and can reconstruct the entire image. And this property of the whole in every part in the concept of the interference patterns made this neurophysiologist that I said, Kalpira, concluded that the holographic model is perfect for explaining how the brain works. He observed that removing the virtual cortex of lab rats did not affect the ability of rats to perform visual tasks and concluded that it could be explained by the whole in every part nature of a hologram. Then Freebrand suggested that if the brain was process processing images and memories by employing some kind of internal hologram, then it's possible for every part of the brain to contain all the information necessary to recall a whole memory. The, the only question that remained was what wave-like phenomenon the brain might be using to create such internal holograms. And a possible answer is when electrical messages reaches the end of a neuro, it radiates out, outwards, as does the ripple in a pond. And these expanding ripples of electricity constantly crisscrossing one another are also a wave-like phenomenon, which creates arrays of interference patterns. And this might be what gives the brain its holographic properties. So, this hypothesis, mainly this hypothesis, caught the attention of the group of research, researchers to which I belong. Because these principles are also a good way of explaining the oriented dialogue, or so-called guided dialogue, which is a technique we presented in PACE 2011 in Rio de Janeiro. Basically, the oriented dialogue is a technique of self-knowledge, consciousness, and mental conditioning through a specific dialogue with the diseased organ and with our DNA. We believe that this exercise can increase our awareness about the disease or problem faced and such information learned contributes to the de development of brain neuroplasticity and cell regen regeneration.
So let me show you one of the cases represented in PACE 2011. Here we have the case of a T4 staged pancose tumor. In addition to the conventional treatment, which included chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery, the oriented dialogue was used with the patient in two weekly sessions led by a physician for 34 weeks. And the patient was instructed to repeat aloud a dialogue like this one, where the patient verbalizes a command to activate neural networks. And after 34 weeks, the results showed that the affected lung was fully recovered, which is not expected for Pankos tumor's case. This can be seen on X-ray and CT scans right after surgery and 34 weeks later, when lung was completely expanded. So this and other results obtained, obtained in that occasion and in the last 11 years, and some of them also presented in PACE, made us think of improving the technique with the inclusion of new sensory stimuli. This led us to consider the holographic perspective and the use of virtual reality resource, mainly because we agree with the hypothesis that the brain is capable of processing even more sophisticated holograms using quantum, quantum principles. Let me show you these ideas. A quantum hologram doesn't even need to see their subject and uses quantum entangled photons to encode information, which means that when an agent acts on one photon, its partner is also affected, no matter how far apart they are. So, scientists from from uh, Fraunhofer, Fraunhofer Institute in Germany, they used a nonlinear crystal to split a violet laser beam into two beams, one far red and other near infrared, and they used the far red beam to illuminate a glass plate, which were engraved with symbols. Whereas they used a camera to record the near infrared light. With the help of entanglement, they could use data from the near infrared light to reconstruct a hologram based off the, t the details of the object, the far red beam scanned. So, bringing this concept to the brain, the coherence information required to build the hologram could be generated by a simple thought, for example. It's just enough to think in something, and a connection is immediately made, working as the object being used to construct the hologram. Of course, Depending on the nature of the thought, the, project, the projected hologram may or may not be good to the body matter. For example, it is, it is well accepted that psychosomatic factors can cause disorders such as fatigue, insomnia, pain, hypertension, skin rashes, stomach ulcers and even cancer, just, to, few name, just to, to name a few. So scientists believe that stress releases hormones and chemicals in the body that cause damage or dysfunction. And this is reasonable since a stress condition usually comes from a chaotic lifestyle including childhood neglect, depression, alcoholism, loneliness, 
a history of sexual abuse and employment, difficult expressing emotions and many others. But if this kind of information resulting from these kinds of sensations and habits can negatively affect our body matter, then it's also reasonable that the correct information could bring benefits to our body and even repair damages or illness. So the key point here is information. Let me show you a little, a little bit more of theory. The physicist Hof Landauer proposed in 1961 that information is physical. And another physicist called Melvin Vopson of the University of Portsmouth proposed recently in 2019 that information is equivalent to mass and energy existing as a separate state of matter. And he postulated that the information is the fifth element or the fifth form of matter. And this conjecture is known as the mass energy information equivalence principle. And it says that every bit of information has a finite and quantifiable mass. So in, in other words, Bobson says that all elementary particles store information content, content about themselves, similarly to how we are encoded by DNA. Let me show one more research to help this the develop, the development of this reason. This is the research of Marian Diamond, a neuroanatomist at the University of California, who studied Einstein's brain and found out that four regions of Einstein's brain had more glial cells compared to a control group of brains. This could be evidence of the mass resulted from the information Einstein was able to manage. And her research about brains showed that living in an enriched environment can change the anatomy of the brain. And also showed that there are at least five important factors for health of brain. Diet, exercise, challenges, novelty, and love. So let me put all these ideas together. When we have a life surrounded by good information, like body consciousness, health diet and love, the interference patterns produce holograms of pleasant experience. And the mass equivalent to this information integrates our body matter in a healthy way. But on the other hand, a chaotic lifestyle produces disordered mass as a cancer. And based on everything that was exposed, nowadays the patients who have been treated with oriented dialogue are instructed to repeat the dialogue while they watch a video that shows features about their disease and teaches them what is the health pattern of the affected organ or tissues. So this new approach has proven to be more efficient and stimulating since it improves the patient's learning process. They watch these videos using VR headsets. We, we are organizing all data of our patients for a future publication, but all that I can say for now is that the results are encouraging, especially in cases of depression, autism, sleep disturbances, chemotherapy, it helps alleviate side effects and mainly the anxiety. Anyway, just to mention a few. So, 
going back to the question of the beginning of the stock. What can we expect from metaverse in the healthcare field? It depends on a little bit of imagination. Depends on our ability to think outside the box. But a good way to answer this question is to go inside the metaverse. So, excuse me. I'm going to close this camera for a second and try to answer the question from the perspective of metaverse. Just a minute, please. Hi, I'm now inside Metaverse. And what are the benefits of being immersed here, considering that my interest is in healthcare possibilities? Well, here I have a new reality, a new set of sensations. My senses can be bombarded by all sorts of visual, sound, and even touch information, if I wear special gloves, for example. I can interact with other people, Hello, he's my son, Diogo. Bye bye. And all these stimuli produces interference patterns that the brain processes like a new hologram using Fourier mathematics. And how does this work for the oriented dialogue technique? Imagine a patient with a heart dysfunction. Patients in general don't have much knowledge about their disease. So the first goal of oriented dialogue is to give the patient information about his problem, about what's need for its recovery. It works like the object being used to build a hologram, where the subject is the Im image of a health organ, which is decoded in frequency by the retina. And the reference being is equivalent to the song playing together with the dialogue repeated aloud. Then, an interference pattern forms a new hologram of the health organ in the brain, activating neurotransmitters that deliver new information to cells and DNA, reprogramming its functions and its structures to the health pattern. Based on this, we believe that the holographic approach, combined with the new way of interaction and human connection inside metaverse, can be a powerful tool in the healthcare field, especially because this combination seems to be an effective way to change and save the information into our body systems. To finish, let me show you a last one minute video about the holographic universe. This new principle, this holographic principle. And what it said is that all the things that were falling inside a black hole were somehow captured in a preserved image at the horizon itself. So if the information is not lost on the surface, the information is not lost inside because they are equivalent. All the information about those objects, what they were like in their three-dimensional existence, was preserved or encoded on the surface of the black hole. And that's a little bit like a hologram. Well, that suggests that maybe that idea may apply more broadly to the universe as a whole. Maybe the three-dimensional objects, us, everything in the world around us, maybe all of the information in these objects is carried, is smeared around a distant two-dimensional surface that surrounds us, and we're just in some sense a holographic projection of that distant data. The holographic principle tells us something quite astonishing. It says that our ideas of volume, of the, the, the real world in a sense, might be a kind of illusion. Okay, let me come back from the metaverse and sit in my chair again. This teleportation makes me a little dizzy. Well, let me conclude, if I may, by making a metaphorical reflection. 
The main thought-provoking idea about metaverse is that all this theoretical stuff seems to show us that we are exactly now living inside the metaverse in a kind of computational simulation, maybe inside a black hole that could be seen as a big computer, which code is in the surface of the event horizon, and we are just programs or holographic projections of this information. And all we need to keep our hardware, our body, and our program, or DNA code, working well, is to live our lives producing good information, good deeds, with attention to our neighbor, always looking for our improvement as people, professionals, and human beings, in order to save good registers in our hard drives or DNA, and to have our matter and our energy in balance until the end of our time in this existence or in this universal metaverse. Well, I hope you found this topic interesting and that I have at least aroused in you the curiosity to consider this approach in future research. This is a link for the dialogue videos in Portuguese, if you have interest. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'm now available for discussion. Thank you.